Hello again! My name is Casey Long, and this is part two of Design Lab's video design series. Today, I'll be talking to you about the final stage of filmmaking, which is post production or editing. If you have questions about cinematography or sound recording, please watch the first video in the series. Let's dive in! So now I'd like to wrap up the technical aspect of CAT with an intro to editing. The first thing to note here is that the basic interfaces of iMovie, Premiere, and DaVinci Resolve are quite similar. I'm going to go through the basic interfaces of both iMovie and, to a lesser degree, Premiere. We'll talk about video aesthetics, so using transitions and titles, scaling your images, and how to use color. And finally, we'll discuss sound editing. So if you've never opened iMovie or Premiere before, the first thing that you want to do is create a new project. And this is the same in DaVinci Resolve as well. Next, and I cannot emphasize this enough, naming and labeling your project is crucial. So name your projects with the plan to have a rough cut, a second rough cut, and a final rough cut at the very least. Please note that iMovie automatically saves a project file to your hard drive. So if you are working on your own computer, rest assured that your project is saved. If, however, you are working on a computer in the computer lab or a borrowed laptop, you should follow these steps to ensure your project is saved and accessible to you at a later date when you are likely to be working on another machine. After that, you'll want to upload it to Google Drive, Box, or OneDrive before logging out of that computer. So now that you have opened the program and created a new project, you're going to want to begin importing media. And as you can see here, iMovie and Premiere Pro both have a similar system for doing that. DaVinci Resolve is another great option for non-Mac users. It is free to download and adheres to the same principles and formatting as iMovie and Adobe Premiere. Please note, this software was intended as a color correction program initially. In other words, something filmmakers would use after editing in Premiere. Still, the new updates have made it a viable option for student editors. And of course, it's very nice that it's free. The main difference between iMovie, Premiere, and Resolve is the location of tools and general layout. However, the essential elements are consistent across all programs. That is, the viewing window, timeline, and the ability to cut footage, manipulate sound, and adjust transitions and text are all very similar. If you are interested in color correction, however, Resolve is the absolute best option for students, amateur filmmakers, and professionals today. The basic interface and process of editing is very similar amongst all editing software, but from here on out, I'm just going to demo on iMovie. The five main sections of the interface are highlighted here. The content library is where we call forth the video and audio that you will import, as well as iMovie's collection of titles, backgrounds, and transitions. By clicking on one of the options in the content library, the event library below populates with your imported media or the built-in titles, backgrounds, and transitions. The timeline, and this is the most important part of any editing software, is where we place our video and audio and arrange it into our desired narrative. The adjustment menu contains tools that allow us to fine tune various aspects of our audio and video files. And finally, the preview screen lets us watch a real-time preview of our video project and allows us to preview the possible adjustments before committing to them. In Premiere, I just want to be clear, we call this the media browser. Notice the portion of this clip underlined with orange. This section of the clip is going to be the one that's in your timeline. And here, you'll find that the video clip and its audio waveform is in the timeline. You can expand these by just hovering over the edges of each of them and dragging them up and down. You can also access the setting tab and that will allow you to change the appearance of the timeline. You'll find mainly that you'll be wanting to zoom in and out and make things larger and smaller depending on what phase of editing that you're in. The key aspect of digital editing is trimming and splitting tracks. This is how you take your original footage and place it into the order that you desire. So to trim a track, hover your cursor over the beginning or end of a clip. 
it will change appearance to two arrows facing in opposite directions. Now you will be able to click and drag the clip either longer or shorter. If you need to cut the footage out of the middle of a clip, you must split the clip at that location. Hover the mouse over the spot where you want to trim out footage, right click and click split clip. Now you will be able to trim the footage out that you don't want. At times you may need to use a transition between sections of your video. Transitions work the same way as splitting and trimming clips, but you must place them between the clips. The four transitions in the top row on the upper left are the least obtrusive. In other words, we don't want to do star wipes because that doesn't look professional. We suggest using these transitions sparingly. You shouldn't even notice that they're there. Often students are tempted to put transitions between every single shot rather than a clean cut between shots, and I would highly recommend that you avoid doing that. Finally, let's consider a few additional editing tools in your toolbox. You can crop an image, you can use a still image, you can use titles, and you can also color correct. The first one is cropping, and you should note that you should only crop slightly one shot scale to avoid image quality loss. So in this example, we have the full shot of a large group of students participating in Holly, but if we wanted to get a little bit more detail of the group in the middle, we can crop that shot. That's approximately going from a long shot to a medium long shot. Beyond that, you'll end up getting pixelated images and it won't match the rest of your footage. When is the best time to use the Ken Burns effect? If you've got a still image, you will want to give it a little bit of life or movement. Still images incorporated into video without movement will look strange. So instead, you can select the Ken Burns effect and then create a starting point and an ending point, slowly moving the image closer or further away. And you can really get creative with where you begin and end the image. You will certainly need to use titles for your project, even if to label your course and professor's name and your name at the beginning of your film. Title sections contain lower third titles and center of screen titles, as well as closing credits. Drag the title onto your timeline, either above the video footage, which would have the title superimposed on your footage, or on the same line as your footage, which would be just a title over black. Try to have your title match the aesthetic of your film. So if you want it to be more formal or less formal, this is a place where you can signal to your audience at the very beginning what type of project you're going to present to them. Lastly, by clicking the painter's palette in the adjustment panel, a number of sliders will appear. These sliders control lightness, darkness, and other color features. Remember back to the portion of this video where I discussed white balancing. Here is where, when properly exposing footage to make whites true, if you desire to make your footage either cooler or warmer in color temperature, you can easily do it. So let's wrap up the technical editing component of this video by discussing what I mentioned before is the often ignored but essential element of video design, which is sound editing. Your first step when editing audio is to detach it from your video. In this way, if you splice the audio, you won't also be editing the visual component of the timeline. Often, the sounds that you hear in a film are completely disconnected from what their sources are. It's something that you won't notice, and that's the whole point of sound design, is to not notice these types of edits. Next, select the detached audio by clicking on it, and use the speaker volume symbol in the adjustment panel to experiment with the audio editing options. Just as with the video, you can right click on your audio and select split clip in order to trim or condense your audio timeline. Now, the audio has been broken down into two sections. There are two options for changing the volume of a selected audio track. We can drag the yellow line on the audio track up and down, adjusting the decibel level of your track, or we can click on the audio track to select it and use the volume control slider in the adjustment panel. A lot of these options are just meant for different people's preferences. So whichever makes more sense to you and you feel more comfortable with is the way to go. There's no right or wrong. There may be instances where you want to adjust the volume of only one particular part of your soundtrack. For example, if a car horn beeps, 
midway through your filming, which is distracting to your listener, you might want to just drop the sound level down of that car horn and replace it with some innocuous background tone. So the way that you do this is to determine where you want your edits on the audio track, hold down the option key as you click on the yellow bar of the audio track, and then you can add as many control points to your track as you want, but usually you'll want to have at least three. So the two nodes at either side are going to stay constant and then you can drag the center one down. If you want even more control, four nodes would be probably the superior option. So you can drag and drop and move the markers up and down to where you want the volume to be adjusted. In this instance, we've created the markers and then increased the volume in one particular portion of the soundtrack. Fading sound is a go-to audio transition that at the very least you should include at the very beginning of your film and the very end of your film so as to avoid abrupt sound drop-off. But you might also find it useful to fade sound in and out uh, across your film. So to fade sound in or out, click on the audio track. Find the audio control at the beginning or end of the track and drag it down. You may also want to add background music, voiceover, or sound effects to your project. In order to do this, you can drag additional sounds or files of audio into the various timeline levels that exist. So in this instance, they're labeled A1, A2, A3. You drag the background music that you desire into the timeline underneath your sync audio from your video. Normally, background music in student films is way too loud. So be sure to click on the audio track to highlight it and adjust the track volume using the yellow volume control as before on the track itself or using the volume control slider in the adjustment panel. As a general rule of thumb, you want background music and background sound to be about 20 decibels lower than your voiceover or sync audio. Both Premiere and iMovie have an option for adding voiceover directly into the timeline. So here in iMovie, you can see there's a little microphone in the lower quadrant of the screen. You click on that and it will record from your computer microphone or in this instance, what I'm using for this video is a headset with a microphone attached to it. In Premiere, there's a microphone icon right beside the audio track that you are working on. And last, but certainly not least, you want to be sure that you know how to export your project for your instructor or purpose. Those of you who are going to use Premiere, just be sure to always check where you are directing your saved exported file to. And that is indicated here by the blue arrow. So I highly encourage you to schedule an appointment with a design lab consultant. Here are just a few things that we can help you with as you develop your project. We can help you specify an audience. We can help you clarify your purpose. We can help you determine where additions to your video might be most useful and what content also could be useful to add. And if you've already developed a rough draft, we can evaluate how your project is turning out. So thanks so much for listening to this video and I wish you the best of luck on your projects for the rest of the semester. Don't forget, Design Lab is here to help you with your project. Due to the pandemic, we have suspended all in-person appointments, but we are still offering appointments via video calls. You can make an appointment from the Design Lab website by clicking the pink Make an Appointment button. You can also start a chat with us using our new chat service, which is open anytime Design Lab is open. From anywhere on the Design Lab website, click Chat with Design Lab in the main menu. We look forward to working with you.